Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about uh, My Hero Academia Chapter 315, the full spoilers and summary. Very quick thing, um, for anyone that was watching the live stream last night, had a power outage and uh, live stream had to die. I'm also slightly cranky because it's, it's hot and there was a power outage, <laughs> um, but whatever. Here we are to talk about um, Chapter 315. And before getting into it, I'm going to try and be in a, as good of a mood as I can, but before getting into it, I will say, I'm surprised only by how quickly that came, but like the spirit of it, I'm like, all right, the spirit of it, you see it coming. But before getting into the details, we'll, we'll do the regular, I'll read you the summary, I'll read you any extra information, I'll talk about the pictures, but... Before getting into there, I just want to make sure, like, if you guys watch any other anime YouTubers who covered these chapters, and if any of them said that All For One Society was the better society to live in, make sure they stick to that opinion when they go into Chapter 315. Make sure they don't flip-flop. Because what you see in the spoilers, really, this is a function of All For One Society. You know, like, when you look at it, really, the person that was screwed over was all for one. And in all for one society, if you're going to screw him over by voiding a contract, well, what do you think is going to happen? Now, you might say, well, but it's insane to blow someone up just because they vi uh, violate a contract. And I would say, yes, but... You signed up for All For One Society. If you agree with All For One Society, this is the logical consequence of it. You know, you went from one society where the people getting killed were the worst elements of society, allegedly, and you just moved to one society where if you say something against the dictator, you die. This is the logical consequence. I, I just want to make sure that if you had people saying that all for one society was better, let's make sure that they don't change their opinion just because the first logical consequence that could have been seen reared its ugly head, right? I mean, what value is someone's opinion if it switches the moment it sees the first logical consequence? And you guys know me, I will adopt unpopular viewpoints until someone is able to smack me out of my stupidity uh, with some really good logic. It, it happens a lot, and when it does, I'm always very appreciative and mildly embarrassed. But um, that's my little facetious little thing there. I'm going to have a nice little run um, on the actual chapter review. But yeah, suffice to say, this chapter spoilers actually makes me feel really good. Um, just because some of my ideas are present here. And the ones that aren't present, I will let you know. And... Yeah, I'm, I have, a, like, one of the things I, I'm definitely really happy about was that I pointed out when that when a character gets a flashback, the amount of time that they're going to be relevant for is extremely shortened. So I'm, gl I'm really happy that we saw it. Anyway, let's get into it. Chapter 315. No more making fun of other anime YouTubers. Chapter starts with Overhaul and Nagant changing clothes and getting ready to go after Izuku. So I see the pictures for this one as well. Of course, we're not showing pictures because Shueisha. Um, and in terms of pictures... It's a tiny bit cute. Like, Nagant has a bit of a tiny um, face in that one. Uh, it looks like they're kind of just at a department store, which I really wonder how she gets to look so military at a department store. Uh, but it's actually, it's, it's a cute image there. Um, I kind of want to see more of that life for them. <laughs> Alright, uh, Overhaul says he knows the student All For One was talking about because he's the one who ruined Overhaul's plan. A brat seriously infected by the hero syndrome. It actually kind of bothers me that he's still going on about this. Um, I kind of wish that after his beat down at Shigaraki's hands, he would have reflected. But okay. The Gaunt jokes about how he's about how she said he would be useful. But that's almost as if fate is helping them. So that just leans into the possibility that the Gaunt really still had no idea why he would be useful. So he just kind of picked him on a, on a whim. Overhaul agrees to follow Nagant and help her identify the target as long as she promises she'll take him down to the boss after it's all done. Okay, so there's a, there's a few things here and looking at the images, I know this is more or less correct, but I do not appreciate how Overhaul has moments of lucidity and how he doesn't. It's very misleading. It's a misleading tactic 
um, when it comes from the author. Uh, because overhaul, this is the most lucid we have seen him, and it's in a flashback. Mind you, when I'm looking at the images, he still looks depressed. Like he still has his, he still has his uh, head down, but he's forming coherent sentences. And when you have that level of clarity, despite the head being down, you know it's it, it doesn't it doesn't feel good. Um, ironically, I've gotten a lot of reviews um, about this mechanism in books. Writing flashbacks like this to justify something that was happening in present time, like within chapters of itself, or like within within the same chapter, is not is not viewed is not viewed kindly. Um, got a lot of bad reviews on some of the scenes that I did like this, but anyway, I don't really care about it for manga. Um, but in manga, like the only thing here is that you know he throws in new information, and it just feels a little bit deceptive. Um, We'll talk about that in the actual. We'll talk about that again in the actual manga review. Cut to the present. Overhaul is screaming at Nagant because he's already fulfilled his part of a de of the deal a long time ago. I actually also really wonder how he helped her identify the target because again, they were how I really want to know how they started looking around for Izuku because Izuku could have been anywhere in Japan. I really want to know how they started looking around for him. That that part's still unclear. Anyway, she had her gun aimed at him and says that from now on she'll have to increase the speed of her bullets even if it reduces her accuracy. Um, in the in the manga, it looks like Nagant changes the form of her gun. It becomes like super muscular. Like you'll see it and I have the images linked on manga helpers. Nagant shoots an overhaul while commenting about how much she hates the hero education system and that only when a person dies because of Ikizuku's mistakes will he understand its problems. This is, again, another really bad round of rhetoric if it's correct. And what I mean by that is, if if you're saying that, oh, someone dying because of Izuku's actions will show Izuku the weakness of the hero system or the hero education system, heroes have had people dying by their hands many times. Big case in point, because of their mistakes with Higantomachia, people died. So... I want to understand this situation. Endeavor has had he people die because of his inabilities. Um, Hawks has had people die because of his inabilities. These people, in spite of that, still stand up. So the rhetoric is just so weak, man. But this makes sense because, like I said last week, the girl was going to flip-flop. Like, the, the chances of her flip-flopping increased incre incredibly when you found out her rhetoric because her rhetoric is... is because her rhetoric is pretty trash like it's probably one of the most trash tier rhetorics we've seen in a very long time um and i'm actually really happy with how everything goes down because this is what she ultimately made herself out to be with the previous chapter heroes have to live with their mistakes so many times and i kind of feel like we've already even touched upon this idea with crimson riot during the crimson during the kirishima flashback so it's it just reminds you it's like it's like horrendous tunnel vision and i want to make it clear at this point i'm not going to blame horikoshi for this i think this is all by design which really only makes horikoshi that much better but nagant is just just a chore when it comes to villainous rhetoric uh, she expects izuku to hesitate and give her a chance to win but he's already on the move we finally get an explanation on the third quirk fudge and this was pretty cool and it accumulates kinetic energy through repeated movements of a spe specific body part and releases it explosively. Izuku was using his legs to avoid and kick Nagant's bullets in the last chapter, so now he's able to release it all and use Black Whip to add centri uh, centrifugal force, boosting his speed even more. Now, you know what? I th remember someone on the live streams suggesting that it was a buildup of kinetic energy, and I forget who it was. Might have been Miguel. Might have been Jason. Might have been... Someone else, I apologize. I'm having Ty. Um, someone else, I am. Uh, I wish I, I, I wish I gave that. I wish I gave that more stock. But whoever had the idea, good job, good job. Um, although, like the end result, I was correct on the end result. But good job on getting the build up. That's really cool, and that justifies why he was doing it. I think when I saw Izuku there, I think I might have accepted that idea. But I think I thought more of it as just being something to warm him up. So, 
yeah, no, nah, no, nah. cool stuff, cool stuff. That that's that's really cool. Anyway, Izuku thinks to himself that he took inspiration from a scene from his generation that he's seen multiple times. All might soaring through the skies faster than any bullet. He calls the mix of 45% one for all and Fa Jin pseudo 100% and pushes overhaul to the ground before Nagant's bullet hits him. So what's important here is that um, when we were first talking about Fa Jin, I had pointed out that it's, Fa Jin is probably going to allow Izuku to reach 100% without actually having to reach 100%. And we end up with that reality. 45 plus Fajin makes it 100%. Um, so this is really cool. Um, probably by the end of the series, Izuku will be doing 200% stuff. Um, and it probably isn't like 100% straight because it's kind of hard to, you know, get the measurement of what Fajin's buildup would be. Izuku probably doesn't have the uh, mental faculty right now because he's only using it for the first time to gauge how much energy he's got. Um, but I really don't care. This is good enough. Um, I'm really happy. So at the end of the day, we do end up with a situation where Izuku is able to get to 100 without actually fully killing himself on it. So this is really good. Nagant is impressed not only because of Izuku's speed, but also because he started moving in overhaul's direction at the exact moment she aimed the gun at him. I think the way that it's presented in manga is that Izuku used Black Whip to alter his trajectory the moment that he saw that gun go out. So... Well, actually, it's kind of hard to tell. It's like he has a bend on it, so he might have also have just done it with his... Fajin is activated on it. He might have just done like a kick in the air and swapped it all and changed it all around. Actually, no, no, no. Maybe it is Black Whip that is changing his trajectory. It's really hard to tell. Um, I think it's Black Whip that changed his trajectory. But he's using a lot of momentum. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the actual chapter says for that one. Izuku says he'll talk to Shizaki later, which is good because we know he's talking to Shizaki and prepares to attack Nagant. The third user appears and says that in the last chapter, Izuku's body received damage because he was using all the quirks at once, and that was one for all, Danger Sands, Fajin, Smokescreen, and Float. Just now, he only used one for all, Fajin, and Black Whip, so he's safe to go. Uh, there's still some kinetic energy stored on his right leg, so he prepares his next attack. Izuku's next attack was pseudo 100% Manchester Smash, where he smashed on Lady Nagant's right arm. He broke her arm. Yes, he broke her heart. Uh, Izuku told Lady Nagant that it's over because her gun was destroyed. Lady Nagant was free falling as she was amazed by Izuku not hesitating even for one second, as if saving Shizaki was something natural. And this is what I said last time the woman was going to flip the moment as she saw Izuku have a good moment. Uh, she remembered what the chairman told her about using her quirk to make society better, and she tried to remember since when, be since when she became sick of hearing such kind of lip service. Yeah, and just to regurgitate, the ideal of keeping villains safe, this isn't unique to Izuku. Pat Gum also espouses an ideal when he tells Kirishima that if a villain, a villain has many win conditions, but a hero's win condition is to apprehend the villain. Like, Fat Gum himself also stands against killing villains, right? Um, this mentality is present in other heroes. Mind you, it's a little bit rarer. But it's present in other heroes, or at least the ideals of it. At that moment, Izuku took her hand to prevent her from falling. Izuku told her that her bullet's trajectory towards Shizaki was a miss, and if she fully supported all for one, she could have just shot his her first bullet towards his waist area, and it would be over for him. Um, so, right now, this is sounding like Izuku is making an analysis. Um, the bullet being a miss towards Shizaki, I looked at the image, I think it is a miss as well. I think it is drawn to be a miss. It's just perspective and the distance from the camera is a little bit hard to tell with the manga. But I do think it is a miss. But Izuku's conclusion here of um, she still has the heart of a true hero. This is a little bit complicated. Um, and the only thing I'm drawing issue with is Izuku saying this. Because Izuku's right. She still, have, she still has the heart of a hero. Like, I mean... We were saying that she still had the heart of a hero when we saw her helping Overhaul. We were saying that was the case. Um, and when it comes down to Izuku being shot in the first go, um, what you see there isn't so much that she wasn't fully supporting All for One. It's that she has morals. Like, those things are not mutually exclusive. You can have someone who is a villain who has an idea about how to approach the business and have it, have them be someone that still does things to a certain degree. Like, have someone that still does things respectfully. I mean, like, the Yakuza would be the example of this type of villain. 
Um, so it, for the spoilers, what I'm pointing out is I think this is a, um, a hasty generalization. I do think Izuku is correct. It's just it, that's because like the rest of the narrative. Um, but again, the idea that because she didn't take the shot on Izuku and hurt him badly first, the idea that that tells Iz the the idea that that says that she doesn't fully support all for one, I think is a little bit naive because the easy counter would just be no. She just wanted to give you options because she thought she was going to beat you. She thought she was arrogant. She came into the situation with incomplete information. She likely just wanted to be nice. And kindness from a villain isn't rare, especially not if you have like a lawful evil villain. Um, but again, the overall rhetoric, the overall context would point Izuku to being right. But the generalization itself is hasty. Anyway... Nagant showed a sincere smile, and when she was about to tell Izuku that he is a true hero, her body began to crack and it exploded. It looked really good. Uh, the scene changed to All for One saying that he knew the people's hearts are fluid, so he made sure to be fully prepared when he breached their contract. Now this... This is what I did not expect. Because I did not expect the man had like a Faustian type of deal where he can blow someone up the moment they screwed him over. I didn't know this was within this man's abilities. How did he pull this off? What quirk pulls this off? Holy crap moly man. And how did he know? Um, it might be an automatic triggering quirk. But once you're talking about contract penalty quirk man, that's pretty intense. One second, I got a big bug in here. Okay, bug's been neutralized. Anyway. Yeah man, holy crap. That's even worse. That's even worse. Um, and you know, in a transparent society, just like, put it out there. In a transparent society, you're told about the the penalties for breaking a contract, you know. And in a transparent society, you make sure someone knows about that. But like, it's gotta be more transparent than hero society, right? Oh, yeah, I bet. Uh, anyway, he sarcastically, uh, Sushi says, felt pity for Nagant because she was being used by other people until the end. We said this as well, that was very clear in the last chapter, but if she wants to blame anyone, she should blame that great quirk of hers. Um, so this makes sense for both All for One side and, Nagant and the Safety Commission side. The Safety Commission picked her out of the streets specifically because of the quirk. Um, and he picked her out specifically because of the quirk and her abilities. So he's actually very correct on that one, um, and it's a little bit unfortunate. It just goes to show, like, at the end of the day, Nagant was useful because she was a gun. In the last panel, we saw Hawks flying towards her. Um, the falling and burnt Nagant is caught by Hawks midair, showing that Hawks' wings have recovered. Which is great. Um, it was suggested that they were. Um, in one of the previous chapters, we saw little debris that looked like his wings were coming back. Um, so it's actually pretty good to get the confirmation here. And, and of course, finally, Hawks showed up. And now it does seem like we're going to get the Shizaki talk and we're going into probably a recovery period. The first thing I thought when I saw Nagant getting burnt up, I'm like, if there's ever been a time for Shizaki to reveal what his work can do that now that it's been remodeled, if it actually is still working, this is the time. This is the time to see if they can fix Nagant. Because if they can fix Nagant, that'd be great. This might lead to Izuku being like, oh god, Nagant got damaged. He looks to Shizaki. Shizaki, you dick. Help her. And he's like, I want to see the boss. Help her and we'll take you to see the boss, you dick. Um, that might be the way to go about it. Izuku knows Shizaki's abilities, so he should be able to get him to help. But we'll have to see. Um, overall, with the spoilers, there's really no words to describe how happy I am with this. Because, rhetorically, this is what happens when you team up with All for One. And now, one thing to address is the speed with which everything happens here. It happens pretty quickly. I'm glad that this happened very quickly, although, again, pretty shocking that it happened quickly. But the reason it's important that this happens quickly is so that we don't have to spend 20 chapters of listening to people think that All For One society is better. Uh, because a lot of those people were motivated specifically because Lady Nagant's a pretty lady. So it's better that we get out of this now. And so I'm ultimately very happy that we are at this point. And I'm, I'm happy that we also got the little bonus of Hawks having his wings back. 
Anyway, um, Atsushi had a few more little things that he wrote. Like the chapter ends with Iz sorry with Hawks coming to the rescue and telling Nagant not to die. So, like, really, if Shizaki has any ability, I definitely want to see it. I want to see it come out um, to save Nagant. Nagant, um, other things was Nagant was about to admit that Izuku was a true hero, but suddenly cut to all for one. He says he knows very well how people can change their minds. That's why he prepared a surprise in case the conditions of the contract weren't fulfilled. Um, I'm actually very, that's curious because this speaks to something way more mechanical um, when it comes to the quirk that was used. And I, th this feels honestly like the level of Isekai, like usually in Isekais they have slave contracts. This feels as fleshed out as a slave contract, which is concerning. Um, I do want to know the mechanisms for this. But otherwise, I don't think there's any other critical details that Asushi gave us. Um, in terms of other cool things here, Izuku's moving so fast he sometimes looks like Mickey Mouse or like some uh, Looney Tunes character. But otherwise, for images, the chapter looks really pretty. I'm really happy we got so many things. Like again, the breaking of her arm. Thank, thank goodness. Like that really so appreciated. Uh, but yeah, that's the spoilers for chapter 315. Critical chapter. I can't wait to see what people are going to say this week. Uh, but yeah, guys. A, a lot of really nice faces for Nagant. But yeah, guys. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the spoilers and my thoughts on them. And I'll see you for the review. And for anyone coming to the live stream tonight, I'll see you at the live stream. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.